Where do they come from? I am. What truck? From. Muons are small particles made from a cascading of particles of high cosmic radiation. Once created from a pion decay, muons fall down to the Earth's surface near the speed of light, decaying on impact with any solid material, leaving behind a short-lived electron and antineutrino plus a neutrino. Then they become pions, then they become muons, then the muons become electrons. Well, from the pions it creates muons and anti, or mu neutrinos. Yeah, who cares about those? I know, but just like... I got the essentials. And so what are we finding in the scintillator? Muons. What are they doing in there? They create light. A decayed muon releases an electromagnetic signal when it creates the electron, neutrino, and antineutrino. When the electron decays, it also releases its own electromagnetic signal. In our electronics, these are read as changes in voltage over time. But you certainly yeah. do need a PMT input. No, I like so this is the input from the PMT. That's going to go into here, and then it will do its thing. And then it'll go the scintillator's connected to the PMT cable. PMT cable's connected to the discriminator. Discriminator's connected to the USB cord, which is how the computer reads the data. And then this will go over. Now, sometimes with this software, when it tries to, one of the things they want you to do is they want you to bring up the voltage to a certain level. Yeah. yeah. Right? So what we're going to do is get a multimeter and then measure the voltage right here. So the next thing that you want to do is you want to look at the range. So we have a voltage here, and the voltage range is um, it's like um, a thousand volts DC. I think in the notes, check this out guys, I think in the notes they say the output volt, oh here it is, high voltage monitor is 1 divided by 100, okay, so you've got to figure out, this is the true voltage that you're reading there, um, divide that by 100, you've got, to, you've got to divide it by, you've got to multiply this number by 100. So essentially when you're here, you're letting every new one through, and what you did, you're getting like accidental Turn up the discriminator. You're discriminating. That's more control. Exactly, it's more control. And what we're doing is really figuring out which muons are the real muons we're interested in. So we, can, okay. we set our threshold okay. to <laughs> what okay. our voltage threshold to what the lab right. told us to, so, um, so that we, so we are discriminating between 180 to 220 millivolts, um, which makes total sense because in this tall part here is when I lower the threshold, which lets a ton more muons through. So when I lower the threshold, we'll end up with an extra large bin because it's reading every single view on that's coming through. And there it is. Um, and if I raise the threshold higher than what we decided to, then it's only letting it slowly slow amounts of view on through and our bin gets small, which means we're reading less so we'll go back to our regular threshold. That's where we will begin tomorrow. What's changed? Nothing's changing. It looks pretty much the same. All right. That's but okay. see, we expect Wait, to see. Wait, were you guys like? But this isn't. That one. Those. Like, why, why would you say it would go down? This is the number of viewers that. Nothing's gonna go down. They're gonna see that one went up. Whoa, whoa, whoa! But it's not supposed to before this one. Before goes. that one does. Why do you uh -oh. see? That's what our problem with this one was. Yeah, but nothing. New ones are no, no, nothing, nothing should be changing over time. I think we have these protective ones. Good thing. So 
in other words, your resolution is going to be plus or minus 0.6. Right? But if you divide that 6 with the 60, then your bin size is going to be 0.1 microseconds wide. So literally think of it as little catch bases. Like, if I only have six, I have a catch base in this big, a catch base in that big, that big, that big, that big. So any count that comes in there counts as one. Whereas if you divide it up into 60, you're going to have a lot finer resolution. This graph is a decay time histogram for about 16,000 events collected over 72 hours. Each bar, or bin, represents a change in time between decays. But what we're doing here with numbers is remember each bin counts up. So, so what is the error in a bin that counts at six? So what is the error of a count? Wait, the square root of n. Square root of n. So you have six plus or minus, what's the square root of six? Um, 2.5. Okay, so how big are those error bars? Pretty big. So right now, as a matter of fact, you know, the error bars are scaled exactly that way. See the size of the error bars up and down? Yeah. Those are the true error bars. An exponential graph can be turned into a linear graph by taking the natural log of each point. Once this has been done, two distinct slopes can be found in the linear graph. Alright, so I'm going to come in with a signal right here. So what I've got is the output, the amplified output of the PMT coming into my uh, oscilloscope. Alright, and um, so I think right here we're on milliseconds. So what I'm going to do is change it to microseconds. Move the signal now over to here. So I'm just moving the center of the signal over there. Oh, there was one. Did you see it? <laughs> oh, I saw it, yeah. yeah. All right, so put it right in here. All right. And then... Um, and we're on one microsecond per division. So this is a spike coming. Yeah, and then one thing to do is our, um, is one of I saw that there. Was there another one over here? Uh, it was actually before that. Okay, and um, then that one. Okay, that's kind of where I was. Classically, in the muon's rest frame, it has a finite lifetime. In those short microseconds, it wouldn't survive the long fall to Earth's surface. But relativistically, according to the observer, muon's lifetime is extended and the distance to Earth is shortened. The fact that physicists are detecting high rates of muons so close to sea level proves Einstein's theory of special relativity.